Hi, this is Magdalena Baczewska and you are watching Back at Home. For today's video, I have prepared the performance and a short discussion afterwards of the 22nd Prelude and Fugue from the first book of J.S. Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier.
now the same prelude and fugue played on a harpsichord.
This video is designed to help you think about the music of Johann Sebastian Bach as performed on a modern piano. I will be sharing with you some ideas and wisdom of great musicians of the past and also of the present. And with me here today I have one of my favorite books by Nicholas Harnoncourt called Music as Speech, Baroque Music Today, Ways to a New Understanding of music. And for this B-flat prelude and fugue, I'd like to address repeated notes. You <laughs> Nicholas Harnoncourt writes, they always have a special meaning. They are forbidden in strict part writing. In early music prior to 1600, they appear only in onomatopoeia and when a tone is divided into syllables. Repeated notes were an invention of Claudio Monteverdi, who in the Combattimento di Tancredi e Clorinda consciously divided a whole note into 16 short notes to express the emotional state of anger. From that point on, repeated notes were only used to achieve certain effects, usually having to do with heightened emotional states in keeping with Monteverdi's original concept. Many classic symphony movements are composed over stereotypical repeated eighth notes in the basses, which results in a very strong feeling of excitement and tension emanating from the accompaniment. This is seldom understood today because repeated notes are for us simply repetitions of the tone or the chord and do not express anything. Well, listen to this beginning. And notice how Bach is building tension in that repeated bass. And he finally allows it to content. Now oh, this beautiful prelude, which so much reminds me of Bach's St. Matthew Passion, is followed by a five-part fugue. Now, the task of the performer is to not only find where all the themes take place, but also mold the melodic lines in a way that makes sense. Bach does not help us a whole lot in terms of notating articulation markings. We've already discussed this in a previous video on how this would have been obvious to his students. But let me share another idea. I believe you will find it somewhat life-changing. Harnercourt writes that prior to 1800s, the work the composition itself was notated, but the details of the interpretation could not be deduced from the notation. Now fast forward to 1800, it is the performance that is notated. In this case, the notation includes directions for performance. It does not indicate, as in the former case, the form and structure of the composition the interpretation of which must be deduced from other sources, but rather describes the interpretation as precisely as possible. This passage is to be played in this way. So Harnoncourt argues that all the music written after 1800 is focused mostly on the performance. Here Bach gives us simply the record of the work itself. articulating for you. Exaggerating quite a bit so you can hear the nuances of the articulation. It will come in extremely handy toward the end of the fugue. These four note motifs 
will be uh, weaving throughout the fugue, even at the very end of this glorious stretto that Bach injects. of advice that goes for all fugues that you will ever play. Do not try to bang out the themes. It is very important that you know where they are, where they begin and where they end, and do your very best to articulate them in a way that allows for the listener to hear them clearly. But there is nothing worse than playing them overly loudly and hammering them out for us to notice. For those who know that the stretto is there, they will hear it regardless. For those who don't, it will sound like a very pretty bunch of chords. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. There will be more such videos coming up. Leave me a comment if there are any other issues that you would like to explore in these videos, and I'll be very happy to address them next time. Thanks so much for watching.